Hello, hello, everyone. It's David and uh, Monique here from YGN. Hey, everybody. Good to see you again this week. Welcome to Nature of the Business, Episode 3. And this week, we're going to be sharing the story of the swim turbine. And uh, we're really excited to be talking about this with our community because it is such an impactful product for us um, at YGN. And so it's exciting for us to be sharing this and the story behind it with, with everyone out there. Monique had the idea and the inspiration and she figured out a way to get it made. When did you first think about the swim turbine and when did we actually launch it? So the idea has been nibbling at me for probably maybe very soon after YGN was founded in 2016. Wow. I always knew that Black women have this like unspoken rule that we don't really get our hair wet when we go in the water, which is a very different experience to have than pretty much every other culture. And it felt more like a restriction than anything else. So I just felt like it didn't make sense. (laughs) <laughs> we should be able to swim as freely as everyone else. And so that's why I knew that it was a problem that needed to be solved. Uh, I just didn't know how it was going to get solved. Yeah. And what was that process of figuring it out? Well, let's back up, actually. What is the YGN swim turbine? What is, if you had to describe it to someone, how would you describe it? The swim turbine is a silicone lined turbine that is made to protect your hair from water when you swim. Got it. And there have been silicone caps for people. Swimmers wear silicone caps. Those things existed. What makes the YGN swim turbine different? So what's interesting about traditional swim caps and silicone caps is they were never actually designed to keep your hair dry because of just the nature of water dynamics, water is going to get in wherever it wants to go, right? And so there was never a product that even attempted to keep hair dry. One, because of the the fact that it's a diff- more difficult product to design, but two, because of the fact that most cultures that are in the majority never even needed that to happen. It's okay to get your hair wet. So... That's what's different about the swim turbine is that we have found a way to create a seal that doesn't allow water into your hair. Cool. And as you were thinking about this, what was the process of exploring it? Because you do a lot of the design. You might have an idea. Do you still sew the first prototypes or do you give it to the team to prototype? Yep. I still sew the first prototype. I end up on the production floor with, <laughs> I use a machine and I, I get it done. Mm. I still draw out our patterns and pick the fabrics. So I do still do a whole lot of the design work. Wow. And so with a swim turbine, I assume you had never worked with these materials before. Where did you start? How did you even think that you could do it? The first place I started was buying what was on the market. There, There were some products on the market that were, they were... They had like plastic inside and they were trying to be waterproof, but they hadn't really achieved that. So there was one that I could find on Amazon and it had a plastic shower cap um, sewn in. And I I was like, oh, this might work. And I tried it on and I went in the water and my hair was soaking wet. (laughs) And so I realized that the place where they were sewing the fabric together, the seams, was letting water in. So then I started researching is there a way to have a waterproof seam and that exists in camping and sometimes boating and so then i was calling up these boating companies and i was like hey i'm trying to make like a waterproof seam for this (laughs) and they're like we don't we can't really help you here (laughs) and and so i then was looking at things like waterproof thread i'm like okay maybe if the thread is waterproof then the holes that you put through the fabric like it won't let the water through that didn't work and so then i was like okay silicone actually is waterproof 
right? There are a couple of there are a couple of materials that are waterproof. Silicone is one of them. Neoprene is used a whole lot in water activities. So I tried those. And so I began putting the cap, I put the cap into a like fabric covering and I put elastic around the bands so that it would hold the cap in place so that it would let less water in, right? Mm -hmm. And so that ended up being the first iteration of the product. And what I found was because at the, the edge where I wrapped the fabric around, that was not sealed to the skin or it wasn't tight enough to the skin, it was still letting some water in. So it was a better option than your typical swim cap, um, but it was not quite what, it wasn't quite delivering on the promise that that we were looking for. And was that the, was that sw the Swim 1.0 or was that the precursor to Swim 1.0? So that was Swim 1.0. And really with that product, it was like, okay, it was good enough to get in and splash around. But then once you get it out to a mass of customers, we began really advertising and getting feedback from our customers. We realized that those people who were like really swimming, it wasn't working the way we wanted it to. What, and I, I remember these conversations that we were having about how we should play launching uh, this swim turbine. What do you remember about that time? Um, what do I remember about that time? I don't know. It was all a blur. You tell me. <laughs> we had just raised our first round of funding. We were scaling the business and scaling the production fill silly. That was, that was one of many crazy times that we've had at YGN for sure. I remember you're mentioning it. We talked about it. And when I get to preview it, but tell me a little bit about the trip and the shoot, because up till that point at YGN, we had done a lot of photo shoots, but you thought a lot about telling the story of this product. And so tell me about the idea that you had behind it. And then this first campaign that you were inspired by and how that led into the launch. Yes, we had done photo shoots. We hadn't done a whole lot of storytelling photo shoots. And I knew that this one had to be a storytelling photo shoot because it was such a new and novel product. And it wasn't something that we could just, we couldn't even get on the internet and say, hey, we got this thing and your hair is going to be dry when you get out the water because people were like, you're crazy. There's no, <laughs> absolutely no way. But right. so we had to get the visuals of that and tell people why they needed to change their behavior. And so we planned this photo shoot. We had a great photographer, but the photographer at the time didn't have a creative director that could put together this type of story, right? So I found this creative director online and he's this, he was this guy from LA and he was a white guy from LA. And so the story was like, it was new to him even. So I spent a lot of time explaining to him why these people <laughs> want to get their hair wet. Right. It was like even like the fundamentals of why the product was even created. I had to like feed that to him. And mm -hmm. we ended up with a script because we were going to Mexico. I, and we had to find people in Mexico to, <laughs> we have to find models in Mexico to, to model for the product. And that was quite the fiasco, but, <laughs> but we, we ended up with the, we ended up with the, Decent first commercial, I think. Did tell the story, and when we put it up online, I think that people really took to it. No one believed us. No one believed us at all. No one believed that it was even possible. And to be fair, that first version, it was better than what was on the market, but it wasn't perfect yet. And so that was that first shoot, and we brought it back, and we put it up online and saw what it could do. Yeah. I remember I hadn't seen the product. Actually, I did see the prototype. You had showed it to me, but because I'm in Austin, I'm not in Dallas, I didn't actually get to feel it or anything like that. And then once I saw the first take on the video, <coughs> as okay, this is pretty amazing. And just how I think the story is what sold the product in a lot of ways, because you really did anchor in hey, we're a lot of things. We're travelers and we're jet setters. 
and we're smart and our life is together, but there's one place where we can't. And so there's this little illusion and then you drop it to in the water. I, I really loved how that came together. And when I saw that, I'm like, okay, this is pretty epic. And it's funny to think about it where half the world is like, why is this is even a thing? And the half of the world is, I don't believe that this is possible because I've been, and so it's such a funny conflicting set of worlds and experiences. I think that whenever you're at the edge of innovating like that, you're going to see that where you're trying to explain this world that should exist to people who don't know. And then you're trying to say, Hey, this can exist. And people who have always been told it can exist, mm -hmm. refuse to believe that it's possible. Right. The story of that initial year is pretty cool. And then as we start to see the demand at the time, we were selling lots of other types of products. We were selling our turbines or we were selling a breadth of our core product. And because of the way Facebook, the algorithm worked, it just took over all of our other stuff. So at, at the same time of having all the success, we had ordered all this material to sell all of our other stuff through the season. And it was the first time we ordered in mass. And all we're selling are swim turbines that we can't keep up with the orders. That's a good problem to have when you see that, but also it was definitely pretty stressful. But that was the swim turbine 1.0. What do we learn from the first year of launching it and then into the second year? Specifically around design, right? Yeah. So that first year, like I said, we realized that water was still getting in because of a specific way that the product was constructed. And so I kept on thinking about different products that are made to be waterproof. So you have like gaskets on cars and, um, and then you have, there is the, the only other one I could think of that was used on a human was a dry suit that deep sea divers wear to keep their skin dry and so i literally purchased a dry suit and i was like oh, <laughs> i purchased a dry suit and i'm like i think i still have the picture of me wearing it in the office and i'm like what does this thing have that keeps people dry because these people are like in the deep sea ocean and they're staying dry right and it was a gasket it was a gasket that's around their a rubber gasket around their neck and around their wrist and so i'm like okay how do you put a gasket on a swim cap so then I contacted a engineer, a design engineer, said, hey, I want to design a skin, a swim cap with a gasket on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was the same experience as the other guy in LA. Right. He's like, why? I just don't understand. So then... I'm trying to explain it to him. And then we finally get to the point where it's like, okay, I think I know what you want. Creates the swim cap with the gasket. We find a manufacturer and we start making them. And we start making these, we got a mold and we start making these swim caps. I bring them in. And then from there we constructed it in house. And when I tried that one, it was very noticeably different, better performance oh wait like we actually we've got something here like mm -hmm. this is gonna work for sure what about your creative process pushes you outside of the confines of clothing or apparel or accessories what inspires you to say something seals on the yeah. planet <laughs> like where is that thing like what what pushes you to say where is it i know it exists i don't know one time in an old job that I had, we went through this course where we were looking at other industries, right? So we would say, okay, this is a problem within our space. Where do we see that other people have fixed this in other industries? And that was something that we did for like weeks. And then I think I just bring that into everything I do now. I'm like it exists somewhere and it can, but it might not exist here for whatever reason. So you just find where it exists and then apply it to what you're doing. That simple, huh? It's not really simple, but you know. No, I think that is where magic really does happen. Because everyone's existing and thinking of it within like the blinders of what has been created before them. Mm -hmm. And everyone just takes as that's what it should be. And I think if you do allow yourself to open beyond the things that we think about, you're seeking it versus assuming. So we, when we launched 2.0, 
1.0 was decent size and we said okay we know that we're going to be launching 2.0 did you have any concerns with 2.0 what else did you learn yeah non-functional wise that we transferred when we re-released it the second year what do we hear from customers what were you thinking about a lot of it was around communication about the product right we i think the first version i don't even think we had the real product card, product card with information on the the promises that we were making, the instructions for how to use it. That stuff seems like it's like a no-brainer to have, but we didn't have that the first year. Mm -hmm. and, or maybe not the first few months that we were selling it. I think like halfway through the season, we were like, okay, we're getting all the same questions. Maybe we should put a card in there and uh, so people know how to use the product. And so, and we also needed to set expectations. So of course, if you don't use a product properly or put the product on properly, it's going to let some water in. Some people make the decision, like one of the things about the product is you have to wear it all the way over your ears and all the way over your hairline. Some people make the decision that they, for fashion purposes, want to wear it a little bit further back, right? Mm -hmm. And they're okay with letting a little bit of water in because of that. And so there are just different nuances about the product that we need to communicate about that it, it really helped to set expectations around it so that people didn't come back and say, hey, you stole my money and this thing doesn't work. And I think that is something, especially after going through the first one, we said it keeps the water out, not waterproof. Why don't we talk through the why of why this is so important? Let's talk about the, the breadth of people who use the product. And then let's talk about the who the product was made for and why it's such a big deal and why the expectations are so high for this product. Right now, it's anyone who doesn't want to get their hair wet in the water. But it was made with Black women in mind because Black women have higher styling, I don't know, expectations for their hair, right? It, it takes a longer time if you go in the water and get your hair soaking wet to get your hair back how you want it to look when you're a Black woman. And it just, when you're a black woman wearing your hair naturally is what it is. What a lot of black women do when they go on vacation, and it's actually a running joke on social media, is that everyone goes out and gets braids. Because it's you can go in the water and get braids, and you get your braids wet and come out the water and your hair is fine. But that's the reason that this product was created, because specifically black women were having this blockage against getting in the water because of their hair. So people would literally not go swimming because yeah. they didn't want to get their hair wet. So you're like, hey, guess what, guys? You can go in the water. And so if you're someone who buys this product, maybe you just got your hair done, you spent hundreds of dollars getting your hair done, and if it doesn't work... You're then... <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem if it doesn't work. So right. it better work. Mm -hmm. And it's not like even any of our other turbines, it has a very high, very binary success or failure. If it works, it's magic. If it fails, you guys ruined my vacation exactly. because I thought that this was going to be the thing. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is something that we were after the first year, we didn't even say it was water resistant. We literally just said it keeps the water out of your hair. That was the language I think we settled on. And I think we still use that language because you do have to set customer expectations and there's lots of ways for people to use it. That was an interesting learning. And it's better to under-promise and over-deliver on the product than for us to say, oh, it's waterproof. Mm -hmm. As we roll this out, we do now have a kit's turbine. And how did that come into the mix? That was not necessarily 100% intentional, but you want to tell the story behind the kit's turbine? Yeah, so there's we did have customers who were saying, can my child use this? And mm -hmm. I always resisted that because the silicone in the cap can feel a little heavy on an adult head, let alone a child head. So I resisted it for a couple of years. But after a couple of years where people were like, can I use this for my child? Can I use this for my child? We, we ended up, I guess, back up to the fact that we had this batch of caps that were too small. And we... Ordered that first batch of caps. We started sending it out to customers and customers were like this. I can't fit this thing on my head. 
Mm-hmm. And so we had this cap, this batch of caps just sitting there that we could not use. And then once we decided that we were going to go ahead and, and make them for kids, we're like, oh, we have these smaller caps that we can probably use for this. We, we got a couple of extra colors that were more kid friendly, and that ended up being our kids line. But specifically, the product, because when kids go on the vacation, they don't care about their hair, but their mom does. Like their mom mm-hmm. cares whether they're going to have to spend an hour after the kids get out the pool redoing everyone's hair. And so that was a market that was right for the product because if you can get your kid in this thing and they'll get it, they'll be able to go out and have fun and they can come back and you don't have to deal with that at the end of the day, that's gold for any mother. And I think this is another learning that we go through is you put a product out there, customers ask for the next thing. So they, in some ways pull you forward. And it's this dance between ideas that we might have at YGN, but also what customers ask and give feedback for. And then the other part is taking extras or excess and turning it into another type of product is something that is in the DNA of YGN. So that idea that that first order of head of caps that we bought were too small. Like the sizing was just just too small. And so not tossing them, but then being able to dig them back out and say, here are our kid caps. I think that's, it's really cool. To me, those are some of the things, if you're listening, there doesn't have to be as much waste as you think there might be in a company because there are all either learnings or you can take that thing that you made and reuse it in the future. And I find that a lot where you're like, oh, we made that feature or we did that thing. Oh, maybe we can take that. And so if you're building, don't be afraid to experiment a little bit. And and also don't be afraid to toss things that just don't feel like they're working in the moment because you might come back around to them and just put them away and you might be able to come back around to it. Right. Why don't you describe how you perceive social media and how that plays in the role of product's popularity? Social media allows you to get a lot of real-time feedback on your idea. And then once your product's out there, a lot of real-time feedback on the product. So what social media did for us with this product in particular was that first round, you got some, oh, it worked great. And some, oh, it didn't work so great. This time around for V2, pretty much nine out of 10 people are saying, this is amazing. This product works. And it's not just us saying it anymore. So then you get that social proof of other people, real people, customers in our comments saying, this is the real deal, guys. <laughs> and the other thing is other people who are posting about the problem, about people who are like, hey, what do you like? What do you think about a way to keep my hair dry? I'm swimming laps for exercise. How do I keep my hair dry so I don't have to wash my hair five times a week? And people are literally in their comments saying, go get a Yugo Natural swim cap. Go get a Yugo Natural swim cap. And that's been happening all year round. And so that is, I think that is the biggest thing or the most important thing that's happened on social media around this product in particular is people having that confidence in us, in our product. Yeah, I think that's great. And part of what was interesting with, I think the second year of the V2 especially on TikTok, the product took on a life of its own where people were literally doing a YGN swim turbine challenge where they were like, guess what? I could go in the water. I'm taking the YGN swim challenge right now. What's going to happen? But, and so they would, okay, guys, I'm taking the YGN. And they would put it on. They jump in the water. They like come out. It it's works. It's <laughs> wrong. And so I think that part of it also is cool. Again, social is, a, it can be really great and, and it can, at times it can be uh, a challenge, but especially when a product captures the imagination of consumers or there, there is a clear trend, it just propels itself forward. Mm-hmm. So we have at YGN, we always have this challenge where we make a thing and somebody copies it. <laughs> this is like how it goes, right? That's happened many times now and we're just used to it. And and at the same time, how do you think about uh, potential copycats out there from a business pr- perspective? And, and how do you think about like competition and copycats 
and what that means in general? So I think that my, my opinion on these things is evolving. So I think that I originally, I was, when you build a thing, you create a thing and you find out that someone has copied it and copied it in a really cheap and ugly way. And then people come back to you and they're like, oh, they're selling this on Alibaba. Mm-hmm. Your product sucks. <laughs> like you're just mm-hmm. a bunch of money for Alibaba product. That's hurtful. There's no way around it. It's hurtful. And so I, I think for a while I was like just trying to fight these guys. But when you really think about it, sorry, Ron yeah. is barking. Uh, when you really think about it, it is like, pretty cool it's pretty cool Mm. that uh, an idea can happen in my brain go to the Mm. factory in dallas texas we create it put it out to the world and it gets out there so much that so many people want to take part and and create their own version and iterate on it and all that that's the first thought about it is that it's it is cool it's hard to it is hard to because we're still building our brand recognition I think I'm still figuring out how we combat some of the erosion that happens to your brand when these things happen. So the swim turbine is the only isn't the only thing that this has happened with. Actually, we don't really have a whole lot, although I have spotted some copycats out there on the swim turbine. There's no one who's really done anything. There is one brand that's created their own version of a fashionable swim product. But we have our men's product, our, our Halo Turban. That one, because it's a, a fairly easy product to make, has been replicated and replicated in areas where labor is much cheaper. And so it's been very difficult for us to, to play that price war with them. But I do think that it's something that I'm still learning how to combat that type of erosion that happens to the brand. Yeah, and similar to the men's turban, which we have a design patent for, you're having to explain why this product is novel to someone who has no conception of why this product is novel and what the problem is that it's solving in lawyer speak when you're applying for a patent is if you have, if you're a, if you're a subject matter expert, then you understand the real problem and then you know why it's made the way it is for it to be constructed in this way. And that's what's novel about it. That's one of the challenges of being in this type of space is that these products are revolutionary. How do you describe that in a patent application or a trademark application? But we have filed for trademark. We filed for a design patent on the swim cap liner. It's yeah. 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 So hopefully we hear back about that soon enough. Swim, because it's unique, and again, this is another YGN unique experience, is that all of our products, because they're so innovative, it's easier to sell them online than it is in retail. Yes. You want to talk a little bit about the news about our first retail partner for the Swim Turbine, but also what we experience as we're talking to physical retail buyers about carrying YGN products? Yeah, so first of all, great news. YGN Swim Turban will be in Bloomingdale stores very soon, just in time for summer. So that's super exciting. And it's exciting because it's it has been difficult to sell our products to retailers because they are so novel. And it's been difficult to really sell the fact that we have a market and we have people who are looking for this stuff and to really convince people that's a thing. And it's a theme that's, and we've talked about it twice Mm -hmm. on this podcast already, explaining to people that, hey, specifically the swim turbine, if you have it on your shelf, it won't be there for long. And this is why. And getting people to understand that concept when there is no, that concept doesn't really exist in their world yet has been pretty difficult. Yeah. And the way that buyers work, they have their own, if you're a Bloomingdale's buyer, like Target or whatever, you have your own like little category and you're responsible for that specific category. And you're using historic data to tell you how this thing that fits into that category will perform. And 
because you commit shelf space, your job is on the line if you make the wrong call. You are taking a risk. And at the same time, if you think about the swim turbine, where would you look in a store for a swim turbine? There's not a space where stores don't carry swim caps. They don't, it's not, if you see it by a bathing suit, maybe you might, but which bathing suits do you put it by? And so I think, and then it's not an inexpensive product because it's not inexpensive to make and it's super high quality. So at $48, it's as much as a bathing suit sometimes, depending on the store that it's in, it's as much or more. That has been really interesting and we're really excited to be in Bloomingdale's. And for me, something that really is exciting long-term is that with every year that we show up and every like award or whatever it is that we win around it, eventually the world kind of bends to see, oh, like there are a lot of people who are buying this. And I think that is something that I get really excited about for the swim turbine, but also our current product line and future products that you might, you might, Monique might come up with in her lab. Is there anywhere else that you want to take the swim turbine? Is there anything else that you've been thinking about? That I can share. Specifically for the swim turbine, I think we're really only scratching the surface of the impact that this product can have. I think the problem that we're solving is a significant one, is like giving women of color more freedom in the water. And so that's something that over hundreds of years has caused like behavioral significant behavioral restrictions around what people are doing. Now, Black people in general don't swim as much as people of other cultures. And that's a life skill that Black people do not have. Mm -hmm. uh, and so simply because, not just for hair reasons, there are also, um, you know, things that date back to slavery that people are afraid to be near the water. And so those are things that I think that it's time to address, like an address out loud. And this is just one small way to, to give people more freedom in that area. Yeah. On the day to day, we make a product and we sell on our internet. And that's probably 80% of what we think about. But there is something to be said for the fact that these products don't exist and there are reasons why they haven't been able to exist. And there's a history of reasons why we're at this point. And I think this is the work that, at least for me, ends up being super valuable is saying, this is why this happened. And here's another reason why you should take this next step forward. And that's a really powerful thing because after all is said and done, you're doing your small part to make a little bit of change that more than anything is just cool to be able to say. Anything else that you want to share? We are just, like I said, we're scratching the surface of who we want to talk to and what and how we want to use this product to promote change. I think that there are so many ways that we would love to partner with the community, including partnering with swim, swim classes or swim groups to really promote this activity in our community. So I, I think that's something that, that I want to share is that we're still growing. We're on year three of selling this product and there is just so much more that we can do with it. Yeah. It's crazy to think it's only been three years. In some ways, these things feel like they've been around forever. But when you look back, it's like, it's only three summers. So yeah, I'm really excited about it too. This has been an awesome conversation. Thanks for making this one turbine and going through all the iterations of it to bring it to market and thanks for sharing the story and that is episode three and we'll talk to y'all next time thanks so much for listening everyone take care